In 2013, 97 CKD stage 5 patients were enlisted for a trial on a special vitamin with just one goal. Test subjects were instructed to look for signs they didn't need RRT anymore. This is the real story of that trial. Hello, is this Mr. JB? I'm glad you answered our advertisement. You have been selected. You can be part of our trial. Trial on what? On how to get out of it. You know, the Big D machine. And with just one vitamin. Is this for real? My nephrology says once you start it, there is no going back. Don't worry, Professor Singh already did this in the past. He was able to get four CKD stage 5 patients to stop RRT completely in just four weeks. And now he wants to do it again with more test subjects. Do you want to be a part of it? JB is a 61-year-old farm owner and father of four. He suffered from diabetes and high cholesterol for most of his adult life. And three years ago, he received the bad news. He was going to need renal replacement therapy. And since his doctor started him on dialysis, his life became a constant source of trouble. JB was used to boss everyone around on his farm and to make every day count. The life of a farmer is hard, like he used to say, and only hard people can do it. But now, things became too hard even for him. JB never wanted to retire. But how was he supposed to keep doing his job when he was constantly in and out of the clinic? But now, there was some hope at the horizon. However, like the researcher told him, there was no guarantee. Once dialysis is started, there are very little chances of being able to stop it. Except, well, except that this vitamin already worked one time on four dialysis patients. But no one even knew if JB was going to be in the treatment group or in the placebo group. Eventually, JB decided that maybe being a part of this trial was a good thing after all. Gathering here, today we are going to see a story based on events that actually happened. This video is based on the work of Professor Singh MD, a man who dedicated his life to help others. Professor Singh is a highly respected cardiologist and a philanthropist. He has worked in the Las Vegas community for more than 20 years as a heart and vascular specialist. His work is very interesting for us. In the year 2000, he was able to get four end-stage patients out of RRT. That was a small study, however, and Professor Singh knew that he had to do it with more test subjects to prove his point. To prove that a simple vitamin was going to be able to get people out of RRT. This is what we are going to see today. Yes, today's video is no work of fiction. What we are going to witness today is based on a case report that was published in a prestigious peer-reviewed journal. And I've been working with people suffering from kidney problems for more than 10 years now and I've met countless people who were all told the same thing by professionals. But what if RRT was not the only right answer? What if there is an alternative? That morning, JB was very worried. Was he going to pass the test? When he talked to Professor Singh, he was very clear about what they needed. JB needed to have a residual output of at, at least 500 milliliters per day for the trial to have any chance of being effective. The more? the better, actually. But JB was on RRT. Two times a week, he had to go to the clinic to receive dialysis. If his output was lower than that, it would have meant that his damage was too big 
no chance of reversing it. So his job now was to collect all his output for the day, measure it and report, which he did. After a week, JB was happy to report to the researchers that his output was 650 milliliters per day. And that was great news. He had an out output to be one of the 97 test subjects for the study. But obviously, having enough output wouldn't mean he was going to be in the treatment group. The study was going to be placebo controlled, so JB didn't even know if he was going to get the active molecule, the supplement. The only thing in the world that could stop his need for the big D machine. So yes, there was a 50% chance that he was only going to get a placebo and waste 12 weeks of his life taking sugar pills. And nobody was going to tell him for the whole duration of the study. That Monday morning was a bright day for JB. The researchers reviewed all the tests he needed to do and he was cleared to start the trial. He went to the clinic to receive the final instructions. They told him he was going to face a choice. All the test subjects were going to have to choose a card from a table. Card A or card B. No one knew which card was going to be the intervention group and which one was going to be the placebo group. Besides, even test subjects in the placebo group were going to receive some treatment, iron, calcium, and vitamins. The researchers told JP that they really wanted this trial to be successful. It could mean a lot for a lot of people. Then, why are you giving placebos to people at all? Why can't you just give everyone the treatment if you believe it works? asked JB. Question, why do scientific studies need a placebo group at all? Okay, this is an important question and I want to take a moment to give it an answer. As JB was saying, wouldn't it be better to give everyone in a trial the treatment instead of giving half the test subjects a placebo? You see, pharmaceutical trials typically involve testing the efficacy of a new medicine or treatment on a group of patients who have a particular condition or disease. One of the key reasons why placebo groups are used in these trials is to determine whether the drug being tested is actually effective in treating the condition in question. By administering the placebo to a control group of test subjects, researchers can compare the results of those who received the actual medicine with those who received the placebo. This is the only way to determine whether any observed improvements are due to the medicine being tested or whether they are simply the result of a placebo effect. Placebo effect has strong implications. When test subjects believe that they are receiving an effective treatment, they may improve even without getting any treatment at all. Placebo groups are particularly important in double-blind studies where neither the patients nor the researchers know who is receiving the active treatment and who is receiving the placebo. This helps to minimize the risk of bias in the results since neither the patients nor the researchers can consciously or subconsciously influence the outcome of the trial. Overall, placebo groups are a critical component of pharmaceutical trials as they help to ensure that the results of the study are reliable and accurate and that any observed improvements are truly the result of the treatment efficacy rather than other factors such as the placebo effect. Back to JB's story now. Is he going to be in placebo group or in the intervention group? Without anyone knowing, researchers included who was going to get the supplement and who was going to get the placebo. The trial started. JB was told that he was going to receive three pills per day. He was supposed to take them at meals. He was also told to look for signs that he didn't need RRT anymore. He had to report if his urine output was going to improve. He was also going to get tested for his creatinine levels weekly. If JB had a significant decrease in creatinine levels, they were going to reduce the number of dialysis sessions he was going to have every week.
The first few days of the new regimen were not so great for JB. He was given a lot of info about what to do and what to avoid. They even told him that he needed to stop smoking or he was going to be kicked out of the trial. And there were many new supplements he needed to take. They made him feel weird and he was worried that he wasn't going to remember to take everything every day. But then, after just four weeks, the miracle happened. His creatinine dropped and he was instructed to reduce the number of dialysis sessions from two times a week to just once a week. This lasted for four weeks. After that, he got the news. Now guys, I know that what I've shown you in this video will seem too good to be true. But it happened. It was documented in medical literature, as you can see here. This study was published in the Journal of Nutritional and Environmental Medicine. Now, not all the test subjects in the intervention group were able to stop RRT. Only 9 out of 48. Of the other 39, 30 showed a significant reduction in serum creatinine. Only 9 out of 48 patients showed no response. Okay guys, I bet you want to know what they were using in this trial now. Vitamin Q. This is actually a vitamin-like molecule usually referred to as coenzyme Q10 or CoQ10. Test subjects like JB received 60 mg three times a day of a special formulation of CoQ10 sold under the name Q-Gel. Now, this is not the same CoQ10 most brands sell. You see, regular CoQ10 is a fat-soluble molecule. Q-Gel is a special pharmaceutical grade form of water-soluble CoQ10. According to Professor Singh, the author of the study, water-soluble CoQ10 can raise your serum levels of CoQ10 much quicker than regular supplements. That's why they used it. By the way guys, I was able to find the actual brand of CoQ10 they used in the study on Amazon.com. It's this one you can see here. I've also added a link in description. As you may see, this is a lot more expensive than regular CoQ10. By the way, if you are already taking CoQ10 or if you think this one is too pricey or hard to find, don't worry. There are other brands selling either regular CoQ10 or even water-soluble CoQ10. As usual, consult your primary care provider if you think you want to try this supplement. However, while there are a few known interactions, especially with warfarin, CoQ10 is safe for people with renal problems. Now, another very important question. Can you still benefit from CoQ10 if you are in stage 3 or 4? Yes, absolutely. I recommend CoQ10 especially to those taking a statin or in general to those over 50. Coenzyme Q10 is an antioxidant that your body produces naturally, but in many cases, not enough of it. You see, in people suffering from conditions that cause a high amount of oxidative stress, there are usually not enough antioxidants in the body, and all the cells in your body need CoQ10 for growth and maintenance. Having low levels of CoQ10 can cause several problems including damage to organs. Most common signs of low CoQ10 levels include muscle weakness, cramps, pain to muscles and joints, and in more serious cases, even brain and renal damage. We also know that levels of CoQ10 in your body decrease as you age. CoQ10 levels have also been found to be lower in people who take beta blocker for hypertension or more often statins for their cholesterol. Today, CoQ10 is not generally given to those prescribed statins, but I believe in the near future this will become common practice. Because given the way statins act in the body, it is to be expected to have a deficiency in CoQ10. CoQ10 is found in meat, fish, and nuts. The amount of CoQ10 found in these dietary sources, however, isn't enough to significantly increase CoQ10 levels in your body. 
As I was saying, there are supplements that can be used, however. Now guys, today I wanted to share with you the story of JB because it's a message of hope. However, if you also want to learn more about how to take Cockitet, I've talked more in depth about it in my video up here. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless.